Well, uh, thanks for your patience anyway, because uh, last week was going to see Grandfather, and that was Thanksgiving. Or what was that? That wasn't Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> That's what we're doing next time. So Thanksgiving we're going. So we'll have two lessons. We'll do Swing Part 1 today, and then we'll do Swing Part 2 on Saturday. A regular time. What was that, 4 o'clock? Okay, nothing uh, interfering with that. Good. So, you know, Swing is a toolkit uh, shipped with part of the Java platform, and it's a GUI. And, of course, GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. And it has a bunch of functionality, 2D functionality, and a lot of components. And it's very similar to what you see in Flex, because in Flex they have all these components. And, and in Flex it's very easy to build things. You just drag them to the stage, and then you program them. And the same thing, you kind of have these GUIs, but you, don't, you can't just drag them to the stage. There's not an interface that like, I can give you right now. So you have to actually program them. You import their classes, and you bring them to stage, and then you actually program them. So uh, you can see why Adobe is doing so well, because it m makes their development so easy. Uh, there's a whole class structure to, uh, to uh, this whole thing. You have an object component, container, and J component. And that you have J label, J button, J scroll bar, J menu, J tree, J pane. It just goes on and on and on. There's tons of uh, swing components. And we're going to look at just a few of them. But before we do that, we need to talk about programming itself and how you actually uh, approach to programming. Because, you know, two of the things that we did, we started with the MIT uh, lecture notes, and we'll be returning to that after the swing is done. And then we'll be programming in everything in terms of Swing. So you, Swing won't end. Because we'll go, oh, here's the, the MIT program, and by the way, let's add Swing to it now. And that's where we'll be going. But I, I think that it's a great point this to, to actually now add Swing. It's a little bit more uh, complexity that you'll be looking at because you actually are going to uh, you know, start working with interfaces. But you've got to go there anyway. I mean, you're not going to build any type of program that your user is going to interact with the console. So... <laughs> You know, so you need to do this. And so it's a good place to start. Now, I noticed Bucky later on, way later on in his videos, I think he gets, he gets frustrated. He stops doing video tutorials in Java for a while. Th then he comes back and says, hey, we're going to start with Swing. <laughs> so way down there, Vic, around video 60 or something, Vic, uh, Bucky stops for a while and goes, hey, let's do Swing now. <laughs> so uh, we were smarter than he was. We actually started a little earlier, but he still has some great tutorials on there. Now, there's two great websites you actually want to take a look at for tutorials on Swing. And it's this one right here, javabeginner.com, Java Swing, Java Swing Tutorial. And the other one is Zetcode, uh, Tutorials, Java Swing Tutorial. Both very great tutorial sets, okay? So they'll go on Swing all day long. Fairly complicated. I think the best one to start with is actually this one right here, the Zetcode. And then when you're done with that, and if you want to learn more and see more complicated examples, go over to Java Beginner. Believe it or not, Beginner is not as beginning as you might think. Uh, right at the beginning of the notes, I kind of have a hello world, but I want to jump immediately into uh, another one, and that's actually approaching this code in, in, in actually four different ways. And the way we've actually been kind of coding from the beginning, and, and M MIT has been coding using the main string arguments, okay? And now the way we're going to do that is show you something called inheritance, extending this. And then from that point, we're going to show you how to uh, basically use a constructor. And we've talked about constructor methods already. And, and believe it or not, the tic-tac-toe game that I gave you, we're going to try to explain, actually uses the constructor method. So that will be good, good for you. And you've got to make sure you understand this because everything's going to kind of, you know, kind of, uh, you know, ping off of this. And then you're going to learn something called implements, which we're going to use to create an action events listener in uh, Java. So, you know, once you put these uh, things on the screen, like a button, for example, you can click it all day long and nothing will happen. You've got to add an action listener to it. Now, in Adobe um, uh, Flash, action event listeners are just like number one. They're ahead of the list. And there's certain syntax that they follow, and it's the same thing with Java. There's a certain syntax that their action listener follows, which is a little bit different than what Adobe does, but there are some similarities as well. So you'll be learning all that. So we're going to actually going to bring up the code. I'm going to go through this step by step, okay, of adding two numbers. Then we're going to show you how to add inheritance using the extends, okay, and then we're going to um, do the constructor method using a, using a constructor in the next piece, and right here, number three, using constructor. And then we're going to Bucky is loves to overcomplicate his programs by using a uh, the fourth method which he uses a constructor in an external class to call it. And so, you know, when you saw the tuna and the fish or the tuna and the apple or whatever he was doing, he's actually basically creating a constructor, and then he's calling that constructor using an external class, which is really kind of overcomplicating it for these simple programs. 
Now, if you have really complex programs which have tons and tons of classes, that's not necessarily an overcomplicating it. For stuff like the tic-tac-toe game, I mean, it's really overcomplicated. And for the stuff he's, he's actually showing on his videos, it's overcomplicating it. So we're going to show you the simpler method. And then next time, I'll talk about the constructor and using an external class and what he's, what he's doing. So it'll make a lot more sense then, okay? But what we want to end up today, which I'll be very happy to, if we make it that far today, is actually using the extends right here and calling it using a class from the constructor and also if we can get to action listeners I'll be extremely happy today okay so let's get started with this simple example and actually Bucky does go through this example but I've actually cut it apart and uh, dissected it and added to it so let me just take a look show you the two videos you want to want to look at uh, I got these in the notes he's, he's Bucky talks about action listeners he's got two videos there he's, he deals with J button he's got the two videos there and uh, he he does a J pain and I actually didn't even list that video because we're going through the whole thing, and he, he and then he just continues to go through and does some swing all along for a number of videos after that. Okay, so and there's another action listener video which is not Bucky's and we're going to hit some of his videos as well. And I don't remember the gentleman's name right now, but we'll get that in the next set, set of lectures. So good, that's kind of an overview of what we're going to do today. Uh, let's hold our breath and hope we get through it all. And so I'm going to just open up Eclipse and start chatting about uh, these programs.